Lauren Birdie, <laughs> that twin mom, also known as my best friend in another yeah, life. I like, why like we, are we not actually best friends? I feel like we already it's are. It's a tragedy. We okay. just haven't physic we haven't physically met, but like it's already there. It's already the vibes are there. So I'm here for it. <laughs> You're giving such good vibes. You always are giving such good vibes. I don't know how you do you. it. Um, I'm actually just such a freaking fan. I'm excited that you are. So it's interesting. We have like a mutual friend who kind of connected us in a way. And then once I found your page, I was like, oh, why have I not already been following this woman? And then I would see your like mom on the street. I was like, you know what? She is such a vibe. I need to be there on the street with you. At some point, I'm going to manifest that for the two oh of us. Oh, my God. But I yes. would die. <laughs> Listen, you're in the DC area. We could yes, do this. We could do this. I'm here you for You know, it. it would be kind of funny if like in like, I know the election is coming I up and it's such a shit show. Shit we show. are just like, I, it's part of the reason why I love your page so much because I think like on social media, by the way, it's like, it's yeah. so heated. It's so toxic. And then there's you and you are <laughs> the light of my life. You are giving me nineties hip hop with your R&B. own spin. You're giving me twin power. <laughs> I appreciate I love every that. second of it. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a break from all the craziness. Mm. I just want to be in DC with you while people are like suited up to vote. <laughs> and we'll be like talking Y'all. about mom stuff. <laughs> it's literally my, it's like my escape, right? Like I think that, you know, and I do, I do have serious moments on my platform, but for the most part, I mean, I live near the DC area. As you said, I live in like Arlington, Virginia. So in general, it's a shit show. Like after January mm. 6th, like there's just been things where like, I literally am at capacity with like the emotional yeah. hardship of everything in the world, everything yeah. that's happening. And my yeah. little like corner of therapy is if I put on some good girl, if I'm my low dopamine days, if I put on some good 90s, 2000s hip hop and R&B, boom, bam, spike spike immediately like i'm spiked and i'm already i'm mm. up to vibe i'm ready to go and so it's something that like i use as therapy like music is my love language but also it helps me stay sane on those days where i'm like with the kids with like what's going on like it helps me give a little joy that i hope to spread it, and it and it and you spread it around yes i appreciate like, it it's so real like your joy is infectious I want to talk a little bit about like what you have on your plate because having twins is no joke. I love that you're like, guys, it actually is no joke. I'm going to like have my platform devoted to it because you had a singleton a decade before. So you know. Oh, girl. Yes. It's so funny. Walk us through. Walk us through like your trajectory in case there are people who are listening who don't actually have have the pleasure <laughs> you're all very welcome if you don't have the pleasure of following lauren yet okay let us know. Tr- okay yes i'll try and give us the backstory quick. i'll give you the backstory mm-hmm. here is how i became a mom so back in 2010 i was on birth control with my now then boyfriend now husband and we were just you know living life i was 23 like fresh newly out of college boom bam got pregnant on birth control which oh was God. a great great surprise now but as 23, I had like, you know, plans right after college. I had graduated. That wasn't in my cards for me that I, like I thought at that time, but you know, fast forward, there's Jackson, biggest blessing, biggest biggest surprise. Great. Okay. So immediately since I got pregnant on birth control, I'm not going to name the brand. It was just like a low dose pill like that I was taking. I was like, you know, your girl needs to go on an IUD because obviously this form of contraception didn't quite work out. So went on an IUD for 10 years and towards the end of that mark, I had the IUD taken out. When it was taken out, I think I just, I, this is another thing that I have, I will stand on a mountain about is just what we do as to our bodies as women yes. is wild. Like the hormones, the things that we have, and there's Unreal. so many side effects. Right. And Unreal. so long, long story short, short story long, when I got my IUD taken out, I fell off. Things were just feeling off. I went to a holistic doctor and they did, you know, gut tests, all these different sort of tests on me, cortisone tests. And they're like, oh, and I had bad acne at the time. So I was going to have my skin like looked at because I knew something was off. Like, oh, are you here because you're unable to get pregnant? And I was like, no, I'm here because of my acne. But why? Like, oh, your hormones are so off. You likely won't be able to get pregnant again or it's going to be extremely difficult. And I was like, cool. All right. Like not really wanting to hear that, but that wasn't a focus. And I was okay. And we didn't have any more kids. We already had our son. So, okay. Mm. I was like, I'm done with hormones. I'm done with my body. I'm done with IUDs. I'm done with all contraceptions. We will do the whole 
like spray and pray. Like we we'll, or we'll look at an app. We'll be like, okay, I also, I'm, you know, I'm with you. I just want to say like everything you're talking about in terms of birth control is so deep for me because I hated birth control. I hated the weight gain. I hated the mood swings. When I had an IUD, I bled for a month. Like my body was just like, excuse me, miss. No, yes. but you know, it is a real crapshoot when you're not when you're not on a contraceptive. So anyway, keep 100%. going. Tell us the it's story. Totally, it's a total crapshoot. It's just, it's also the burden's always on the woman. So anyways, I digress. But okay. So yeah, the burden's I, always on the woman also because like you have to like make it, birth it, for everything. the most part, keep it alive. Yeah, I mean, right, we, exactly. I love my husband, but like it's, you know. We're taking the, <laughs> yeah, the most of the work here. So I decide like, you know, I'm done with birth control. We were kind of doing like the spray and pray, but also Granted, like I was told we weren't be- going to be able to have kids by these doctors. And they were just like, you know, you're not going to be able to. So we were kind of like, OK, th- that was it for us. And in my mind, the back of my mind, I was kind of like, I didn't think my journey from I didn't think I was done with children. Like I didn't think that Jackson was going to be my only. I was OK with that. But also I would joke because people would always ask while I was on, I- on my IUD, are you going to have more kids? And since by then my child was like seven, eight, nine. I was like, if I were to have another child, knowing that age gap, it would almost be like having two only children. Right. So I would joke and say either I'd have to have them back to back, but I don't want to be pregnant twice. I would just pull a Beyonce and I'd have twins. I would say that constantly. It was my little liner, my one liner I'd say. As and you sort of are Beyonce <laughs> <laughs> to me. I will take it. I will okay. take all of that. So, so that's so what that, happened. So you're yeah. a prophet Beyonce. <laughs> I am the Beyonce of the twin. I'm just kidding. I wish, but give me an ounce of her. So basically I've been saying this for however many years now. Right. And then all of a sudden it's February of 2020, or maybe it's like end of January. And I'm like, where the hell is my period? What is happening? Why am I not getting it? Take a pregnancy test, take like five as some of us do when we are not expecting to be pregnant. And obvious I'm pregnant. I'm like, Oh, okay. This is happening. This is a great surprise, but Wow. Okay, here we go. My husband was on tour at the time. I wanted to wait to tell him in person. He comes back like, babe, we're pregnant. He's like, holy shit. I didn't think we could. I was like, yeah, we are. Okay, cool. Then we go like, I guess the eight weeks, whenever you go in to make sure everything's okay to the Sano lady to make sure Mm -hmm. everything's okay. And then she pulls up on the screen and there's, there's, she just says, oh my gosh, there's two. I was like, huh, what do you mean? Is she even allowed to say that? (laughs) Yes. That's what I thought. I would think you'd have to wait for somebody else to come in. No, she was the oh. person that was the Sano person was like, oh my, there's two. I was like, oh, okay. And why uh, are they so always so surprised in these stories? It's like, <laughs> you've never seen twins before. Every right. Time. Like, why are you saying, oh my God, girl. So anyways, she says that and I'm, I'm just looking at her like, ha excuse me. And then looking at my husband, like, this must be the joke, right? I've been saying, I'm going to pull a Beyonce and have twins. He got with you before because we prank each other all the time. We're all about joy. We're all about jokes. We're all about funniness on this page. And he's not laughing. He looks like he's like ghost, like all the color in his body has gone. And I was like, hold up. Are you shut the F up? Are you saying there's twins? She's like, yes, look, there's this. And she starts pointing to the damn screen. And I'm like, girl, bye. Silence. Me and my husband just silent. She's like, okay, well, uh, uh, the doctor will be in a second. And that was the story of us finding out that we had twins. Oh, my God. And, oh, my God. You know, that was the best surprise again I've ever had. But now, homie, my husband, he has a vasectomy. We're not, we're not taking any more chances. And that's what we I love. Now. I love your podcast. And I love that you, by the way, get into the vasectomy because oh, – yes. and, and it's with him. Yes. Because yes. I want to send this out to every man – <laughs> who has enough kids in the world and like loves their wife because can we, can, we should link to that podcast right. episode. You should listen to that next. But it's like, he's like, it's fine. It did it hurt a little bit in the beginning. Tell me more. Yes. Tell me all it, about it. It was so funny because I asked him on the episode, like a scale of one to 10, how bad was it? And he was like a, a, like a one. And I was like, oh. really? So it's interesting because I had asked him like as we were when we were getting when we were married and all these different things, like even while I was on IUD again, like as I was having birth control issues, I was like thinking about different ways of contraception from the jump because I like I can't do this to my body anymore. I knew once I took my Paragard out, 
by the way, when I took out my IUD, an arm had broken off inside of me. So I had to have oh. surgery to retrieve the arm. So I knew I was very much done with everything contraceptive for my body once I I know someone I who got I knew someone who got pregnant. I know you got <gasps> pregnant on a birth control, but yeah. someone got pregnant on an IUD. No. And apparently that's <gasps> really not a good thing for the baby. No, it's like really not right a good thing. To, I know. I know. Here we are. We're like so <laughs> anti birth control. I know. But I, it's a real, it's a real conversation because, like, when you're a mom, you realize yeah. like it's not like some like, you know, theoretical idea to have a child. Like it's fucking real. This it's shit's so real, and real. it's all encompassing. And you love that baby more than anything in the whole world. And you got to be smart about this stuff. Exactly, exactly. So I knew with like my husband, I was just like, okay, would you get a vasectomy? And before he was like, oh my gosh, that sounds wild. That's, that's, I don't know. And I don't know if I'm done with having kids. Even when I was pregnant with the twins, he was like, well, what if we want more? I'm like, then once the girls came home in COVID, like I had my babies in 2020, it was like three days later. I was like, what about that vasectomy? He's like, I'm making an appointment tomorrow. <laughs> oh my so God. We were done. Like he understood. He's like, this is a lot. We're, we're good. And he Wait. goes and- Go on. I need to know, is your sex yes. life better now than it was before? Yes. I think it's <sighs> funny because, yes, I would say Because, so. like, the worry, the worry yes, is not exactly. sexy. Even for him, he would say the same thing, too, because I was like, every, it's so funny when I, when I posted on my stories, like, we were having this vasectomy, vasectomy episode. I probably have, like, 9% dude followers. It's, like, <gasps> mostly women and mothers. Yeah. And then I have, like, a very small percentage of men. And most of the questions, I'd never had that much engagement from my male followers asking all these different questions about the vasectomy. Like the number one thing they wanted to know was, it's wild because they wanted to know if the sex felt different or anything feels like different sensationally. But also, which is something a woman would never ask or we don't even think about, was like, how is the load? Is <gasps> the like, <laughs> right? What? Like, right? A specific? Like, like, specifically, his semen discharge load was another it, noun that was used. Is changed. it? Is it different? I guess for them, I guess for on the inside of that experience, like, maybe that feels different when it's a lot or a little. I mean, is I it prefer different? a little, honestly. It, it's not different on my end. I asked him if it was different on his end. He was like, no, everything is the same. But, like, they want wow. to know the consistency, all these different <gasps> things. And it's so, isn't that wild? I was like, you know that as yeah. women, like, we're not thinking about that. for Like, I think it's just interesting that the male I, mind was like, I, is my load going to look different and be different consistency? I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm it was like, a big question. Bruh, I didn't know that you were <laughs> so connected i know i didn't realize that either but i think there is something in maybe the male ego like a lot is better and i don't want it's oh i think there was something to do with that or like, maybe it feels better when there's a lot chime in friends <laughs> let us know <laughs> please let us know those with penises yeah let us we're, know. We, we're we're always open to understanding you better <laughs> that's from my that's husband's, a for real that is a for real but yeah. from his from his testimony, it was nothing's been changed. Like I think that Great. mentally, sex is better Ugh. because he's not thinking about what are the consequences of this ejaculation right now. Okay, I love that. I love that. I need to know something about both of you guys. Yes. For ten years, when you had this one beautiful child, you were building your careers. You were still so young. How did you? I mean, your husband is a touring musician. Yes. And um, what did you do before you went into this motherhood space? Yeah. So before I went to the motherhood space, I, so I got pregnant, like I said, when I was 23, like right yeah. like, shortly after college, I was working in my mind after I graduated from Chapel Hill, go Tar Heels, whoop, whoop, UNC. Ah! I, my father also went there and he went to law school shortly after, and that was going to be my plan. I thought mm -hmm. that in undergrad, that's what I was going to do. I told my father this, he was like, whoop knowing his daughter very well. Like he just, he knows me. I was like, I just need it. He's like, just hear me out. So I was working for like one of the largest firms in the country. Like they did Taylor Swift's case. They, they've done a lot of different things and working in every facet of law. Okay. Like I was working as, as a paralegal, but also studying for going into law school and then entertainment law, just all different facets, like seeing if I wanted to do this. Right. Yeah. Boom. I get pregnant while I'm working for this law firm and go on mat leave. Right. My yeah. mat leave at the time of 2010 was six weeks. Six weeks. Oh, God. So I came I, back. Isn't that, I, it might still be the same. Is it the same? I think, I think uh, technically maybe that is the 
bare minimum, but like I feel like most companies or they might give you maybe like three months. I don't know. It's still ridiculous. Or, or you have to pay something. Right. Before you have to pay something or before you lose part of your salary, which sometimes you lose part of your salary regardless. And then like it's 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 just wild in this country. In the US, it's 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 bananas. It is bananas. It okay, is bananas. six weeks and you're a first time mom at twenty four. Yeah. Are you twenty four at this Tw point? I'm still I think I've I've had him when I was twenty three. So I was probably like twenty two when I actually got Wow. Pregnant, right. Wow. So it was like newly. So I come back to work. Baby Lauren. Right. At, baby Lauren. Real I don't know what homegirl was doing. She was still listening to nineties hip hop and RB. Let's just keep She's it. doing great. She she, doing we great. are so proud of you, baby Lauren. I appreciate you. So I go back to, to this firm and it's, you know, I'm literally, I think still bleeding. I'm lactating. There is no, no support mental health wise. Even there wasn't like a maternity room. Like it's just go, go, go. We need this doc. We need this doc. It's just, it's a real, in every sense of the word, like a wow. traditional, hard school, old school law firm at the time. Wow. And I remember feeling so lost, so sad, so lonely, and knowing this was all for a paycheck, right? And I think like the perspective of becoming a mother in that environment sh made me shift. Like, what am I doing? This is taking the majority of my time from away from my like then six, eight week old, right? And so I was just like, I'm miserable. This is not worth it. This is not for me. And even like to go the trajectory to become one of them one day, maybe a partner, or an associate was like, that ain't it, right? No. So I think that experience was great because my dad, knowing me, kind of knew me well, that I need to do something that is going to help others. I feel like there was a purpose in it outside of the money or the paycheck. Beautiful. So I then start working for this organization, Teach for America. I work <gasps> on staff. Yeah, I don't know if I told you this. Yeah, I worked at TFA for 10 You know, years. it's so yeah. cool because like, yeah. you know, on your page, you're really giving, you're really giving your talents. You're really giving your joy. <laughs> Like, we, you know, we don't know that much about you. So yeah. I feel so lucky to, like, have this behind the scenes. Even on your podcast, which I love, it's, like, it's about other people. So I'm just, like, I'm grateful to have this, I don't know, to, to, to know who you are behind all this. Also, because, like, you do teach right. people on your account. Like, you're entertaining and you're educating them. So yeah, this no, is I, all put, you're putting the pieces together. I know. I, I seldom, like, talk about it. I don't know why as much. But, yeah, that's, there is, like, a teacher it's series just, Go on. Oh, it, no, I was just saying it's just, it's not the point of your of your yeah. work right now, and yeah. it's just. But it's the point of mine. So it's here the we point are. Of yours. You're pulling it all out of me. Yeah. So yeah. I worked for TFA in so many different positions in the organization for nine to ten years. When I let, well, towards the end of it, I ended up being on the recruitment team, and I led the learning and development for the recruitment team. So it was me and two other black women who led all the learning development for all 300 recruiters that recruited teachers across the country. And wow. Yes. And I loved it. I would put on events. I, we would like just like develop exactly what curriculum they were using to figure out what teachers would be best placed and what backgrounds and what um, um, characteristics and knowledge they should have to best serve kids. What really drove me in that work of leading uh, recruitment, like the learning and development of recruiters who were really going into communities, finding out, finding teachers that would best serve communities, of most, mainly of color, because the whole mission wow. of Teach for America is to make sure that no matter your class, your race, or your privilege, you still have equal access to an opportunity, period, right? Amazing. And so in my mind, I felt like that kind of work of doing something that potentially would hopefully lead the world to be a better place or hopefully lead my community to be a better place with like kind people with leading the way to educate youth to be the next best generation. Wow. That was like my paycheck, right? That was way wow. more than anything that... I could see in my prior career. So I did wow. that for years and I loved it. And towards the end of it, like teach TFA, I don't know if anybody's working in the nonprofit world, you get a little scrappy, you become a jack of all trades, but you get really good at a lot of things really fast. So by the end of it, they had put me on an innovative team where we were trying to kind of change the, basically the direction strategically of the organization. It was like a small group of 20 of us. It was a two year commitment. Um, so we did that. And at the end of the two years, they were like, okay, Lauren, we want you to lead this. And before they could say, Lauren, lead this, I asked to just see if my, what my severance package was, because <gasps> technically my role was eliminated. And I remember my, the senior vice president at the time was like, what are you talking about? Where are you going? What do you mean you want to see that? We, I was just like, you know what? I've done this little, not little, but at the time I had maybe opened up my page to be public to various moms 
throughout like the like throughout my community because when I became pregnant in COVID, I became public in COVID with my twin story because yeah. I was so lonely and I wanted to connect with other mothers. So yeah. I had done that. I maybe had a, a group of like maybe 15,000 followers at the time. And I remember talking to my then manager saying, I kind of want to just bet on myself and see if <gasps> I can take this, what I have, this little thing I'm growing to really just bet on myself and use this little cushion because I'm not, I'm very risk averse, but I had the like severance package cushion that I knew I could just maybe relax for wow. a few months and see what happens. And that's all she wrote. But yeah. And this has become your full-time job? This has become my full-time job. It's very multi-hyphenate, right? But like, yeah. it has brought me so much joy. It's something that I've always liked making video, making videos and content. Like even in high school, I would like with our camcorders, I was in like a video production class, taking that around, just filming things and like making it and editing it into like a cassette at the time. Like it's always been something I've been passionate about in college. I would take drama courses or any like elective that would put me in front of something, but I never thought it was a career path for me because I came from a very conservative family. It was like, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer. Oh, what? I cannot imagine you having a conservative upbringing. So it's you're like, yeah, so it's funny. I mean, like, I don't know why, maybe because you're just like so fun and like <laughs> open and, and the hip hop is so right. I don't know what it is, but I just thought, especially like with your dad being so open yes. about maybe not being a lawyer. Can you tell me more about your, your, family growing up? Yeah. So I'll tell you. So it's interesting. I would say cons so conservative in today's language is not like I would say conservative for me. Right. Like they aren't conservative in today's sense of the word. Right. But like I was raised very Catholic and mm -hmm. I went to a Catholic high school. And the main reason why I went to a Catholic high school is not I mean, my mom, my mom was is a practicing Catholic still. But it was more so she was worried about the public high school that I would go to because I grew up in like, it's a it's a fine community, but I think like she was worried the path I might go on, which was such bullshit because the Catholic <laughs> school was doing exactly what the public school was doing. It's just oh, that, exactly. I, I also went to private school and it's like, no. the drugs are there, the, drugs the sex there, is the, there. Exactly. I mean, it's all there. More money, but that's just it. Like it was yeah. literally the same exact thing, maybe even worse. So because like kids I, are I kids, guess. right? Kids. Also, are kids. when kids have when do when kids have access to money, exactly. And parents who are worse. busy, I right. do think it is. It they can had be bigger worse. houses yeah. where their parents were gone for most of the time. I was just like, okay, yeah. bye. But anyways, yeah. noted. I got such was a that was that like you was that you, you got oh you got into detention every day. Yeah, I love that. Like Brady, we would have been friends. We would have totally been friends. So I was like one of the very few people of color at my Catholic high school. And like we would talk about things about like same sex marriage and how everybody was going to hell or pro-choice things. And everybody was going to hell. And I always just would challenge it. And they would just send me to confession. Like that was wow. my life. And that was wow. know, however many years ago where I feel like maybe they've evolved. I don't know. But all to say, my mom was conservative in that sense where she wanted me to go to be a very like when I got pregnant out of wedlock whoa yeah that was a big deal like things like that they were conservative but i wouldn't say they were tri like i could still be me to an extent but they yeah. definitely try to like dim my light a little bit because i was so at the time radical it was wild right you're but now, you're wildly whatever. creative i mean like i i, I appreciate you you know one of my latest <laughs> comments on your post is like <laughs> your musicality is unmatched unmatched like your you. your comedic ability is like uh, like unreal like the idea that you weren't i i thought you were going to tell me about your professional background and tell me that you were an actress a dancer a singer i just I thought you. you were a performer <laughs> your whole life because now now you are a professional performer and like you have you know like a hundred plus thousand people watching you every day you know like like applauding you so funny. but that's it's so funny because it seems like that's who you've been all along like the idea of you I mean the, even the idea of you working for a nonprofit. I know you're yeah. like a good person but it just, I just thought I I'm sure you've had this like creativity your whole life it's so funny and that, you like, say that. And that, that sort of need for, I don't know, for the world to be inclusive and fun and open. And I'm sure it, that's been a part of you forever. 
It has been. It's so funny you say that because it's always, I mean, I did, I did like do like jazz, tap, ballet, like all the things you like your parents can put you in and always just love being on the stage. Right. I always would find a separate outlet to be creative, whatever it was in high school. I was joining like different theater groups. Right. But I wasn't, I knew it my, I was always told that that's not a thing for you. Like that you need to go oh, wow. the educational route. Like that's a good, fun thing to do on the side, Lauren, but that's never going to be, that's never acceptable in our family to make that a career. So I just I, never. I, I, I can relate so much. Like my parents really? were so proud of me. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, my parents were so proud of me that I was an actress and they would be always be like, you're our yeah. claim to fame and also be a teacher. You know, like, I don't know why right. I also, I don't know what that is that, that like that. I, I mean, they were scared. It's not yeah. like the most, I, the entertainment industry is, I, you know, it is what it is. Exactly. And, and everyone knows what it is. <laughs> everyone knows. And people are finding out even more right now about yeah. what it is and what it isn't. Yeah. I, I think, I think that is what it is. And I think like also as like a woman of color, as a black woman, they were like, that's going to be, you've like education is just, I was always drilled into me. You just have to get as many degrees as you possibly can, as many accolades as you possibly can just to get a seat at the table. And wow. so that was just always the focus. It's like, you just, and it was hard for me. Like I'm smart. However, like going the law firm route, it was way harder for me to like just exist at like a normal base level of people who it came naturally to or even in the nonprofit route like I loved it but a lot of the nine not nine to five but just the working corporate aspects of it it was a struggle it wasn't like it didn't come natural to me the creativity yeah. that you see like online now I can come it's... up with a song and like a second like five like I think in my sleep about different content wow. that I'm gonna do. like it's it's like secondary. And everyone's wow. like, how do you do that? I was like, that's easy. What y'all, like, it's, it's just, I finally, I think, figured it out that like you're supposed to do what you're gifted at. And yeah. sometimes that can lead to success. Hopefully the money will come. And I yeah. think I finally just figured it out. And now my mom and my parents are so proud of me. I think because they see, oh, you're going to be all right. And you are all right. And this is actually is a career path. And, and also now, you got, yeah. you got, um, pregnant at a wedlock and like, you guys are yeah. still together. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was sure by the way, that like you had twins with like, you know, that they were like two different families. Oh, yeah. no. I, I'm sure people think that all the time. Cause like I, yeah. I was 10 years, 10 and seven years younger than my brother and sister. And like, people always ask that. like, Oh, the bo like same parents, you know, like, yeah. because when there's like a big age gap, but like it all worked out. It, it like worked really out. worked out and you guys still have so much fun together. Hell yeah. Do you it's guys been, jam? How musically? We jam? Oh yeah. Yeah, because he's so, a musician I, too. So he is a touring musician. He is a Grammy award winning now. He has started this. He did it so in cool. the 90s. So when I met him, we didn't meet in like honestly, it was there was a local fair. This is how long we've known each other. I was I guess I was 16 or I don't remember. I was a junior going junior in high school going into senior year. And there was a local fair, like a carnival, and his oh band God. was playing at this carnival. It wasn't like a soja show. It was just a carnival that they were playing at. And I remember us seeing each other. And like at the time, I had never dated a white dude. Okay. Like I was <laughs> like, give me my, like, I was into like B2K, like IMX, like amateur, like give me like a Chris Brown look like things like that. It was, oh, I just Chris had Brown. not date. Give yes. me a Chris Brown look alike. <laughs> You know, I, I had mean, my still, type. no, it's except still, that he's still, like a, right? like a wife beater, right? Wasn't he a wife beater? Yeah. Beater? Yeah. Like yeah. just the look, but he's cute. Aesthetic. He's pretty. Just he's the so aesthetic. Pretty. That's it. Um, yeah. so he just wasn't necessarily, and at the time he had these long dreads, like I would say down to the back of his knees. He just <gasps> wasn't someone I'd ever been interested in normally. And he was like locked in, locked in looking at me. Like I was like, what is up with this dude? Like, is he okay? Like not breaking eye contact some point it like wore on me. We became friends. Again, I'm in high school. He's like a little bit older. We're all from the same kind of town. And I was like, I'm going off to college. Deuces. Like we can stay friends. And it wasn't until like my junior year of college where I was like, eh, you know what? He would start playing around the area. Like he'd play like college towns and we'd link up. And then eventually he wore on me and we'd be, that we started dating. And that was my junior year of college until oh my God. here we are now. But from that is what I'm saying. Like we started at carnivals and then slowly just start building and building this like very organic audience without a label. Like it was a very grassroots at the time, really before social media, where this they just grew this huge following. And Brazil, God bless you, Brazil, is really the main reason why they got so huge. Because for some reason, even though they don't speak Portuguese, 
and Brazilians, I mean, some of them speak English. That music translated so much in that country where wow. that is literally the reason for our success. Like, wow. I, it's very much, I, I like, that's why Brazil, Brazilian culture, Brazilian people will always have a soft spot in my heart because that's literally why their band is so successful to this day. And in doing so, like, did you ever the, tour yeah. with them? Yeah. Did I you mean, tour go, with them in oh, Brazil yeah. with the baby? Yes, with Jackson. Not with the girls because it's just been, a lot, I think. Because the they're twins. Be yeah. Because they're twins. They're, twins. <laughs> they're three and a half. Maybe now and like maybe a couple years. Jackson Jackson was like my little Buddha baby. I tell you, the first tricks you, I could like tote him anywhere. I don't even remember him like ever even having a tantrum. Like Jackson was just the chillest, <laughs> chillest Buddha kid ever. He would jump on stage with dad. He would sleep on the tour bus. He would just, it was us and then Jackson. So I could, I was a lot, had a lot more freedom. When I only had one and with his temperament where we would go everywhere. A lot of times to like Hawaii, like the really great island places that were kid friendly. And he just got to see the world, Japan. Like it was <gasps> really an awesome experience. It was so great for him to see all that. And in doing so, like, I think he's now figuring out he's 14, what he wants to do. And I'm a creator. His dad's a drummer. I'm like, you really can do whatever you want. Like, I'm not like my parents where you have to go to college and get a doctorate or a law degree. I'm like, what do you feel passionate about? Let's build that because he's learned um, drums from his dad. I've learned drums from his dad. We do like uh, to jam out as a family. Uh, um, it's it's kind of fun, but we can't really play that many more instruments than like the drums <laughs> and like dancing. So hopefully the twins, but like at some point, take an interest in something else. But like drums and vocals, that's a good combination. Yeah. That works. I think I can sing. I, I I've been told I I th wait. That, I've heard you sing. It's uh, good, or is it rapping? Good? Fuck I think, yeah. I mean, thank you. I don't know how many times I need to tell you, Lauren, <laughs> you are amazing to me. You are amazing to me with three I really kids. I mean, you. three kids. You are going in my head. I oh my God, you. thanks. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm amazed by uh, the fact that this is easy for you is also really interesting to me because like showing up on social media is not easy for me yeah. at all. Like I, really? I, it's not like for me, like uh, going on stage, like I wouldn't, it's it's like my zone of genius you know it's like i don't know mm. that it's easy necessarily like it takes work but it feels oh i'm in flow but going yeah. on social media for me like it's the fact that it's easy for you is like wild to me it's so like you do so many different cuts you do so many different costumes you do concepts yeah. you have literally two babies <laughs> and an older son who like still needs a mom like yeah and uh, you know it's it, anyway i I just, I really do bow to your creativity and the fact that you have let it flourish in this time. Cause like COVID, mm. like having kids without, you know, having two babies, like without planning it necessarily, like yeah. it's, it's, it could take someone down and it totally did the exact opposite for you somehow. I appreciate that. And I have, I have one random quick question that I'll ask at the end of it, because well, I'll just oh. ask it now. You said, so you think, cause I've never, I mean, I had, I'd gone on stages prior like to really becoming an adult like just for fun you think that that feels different than showing up on social media for you or in general yes i'm like i oh. genuinely really oh yeah so different yeah why just because i well it's the same as being in person with someone yeah. right like you're in yeah. a room with them and i can see yeah. them and i can feel them and i can hear them I see what you're saying i the also energy, have been everything. doing it since i was little so like yeah. it's you know the idea of like going on social media. It's not that I think I'm like necessarily bad at it or good at it. It's just that it's not easy for me. It's like, I it's, see what you're saying. I, it's a whole language for me. It's like how you were, you used to, you know, dance jazz and tap. It's like, Oh, you've yeah. been doing that for a long time. Yeah. So okay, it's like, or, or like how your husband's a drummer. It's like, okay, yes. like I bet he could pick something up. He could, he but could, it would but it be would be a different very instrument difficult. for sure. Exactly. It's a different brain. It's a different, I, okay, that was like a very clear analogy because I'm thinking about it because I think you said like COVID and the twins would for a lot of people be like a very big inhibitor to doing what I do. But I, for me, it was almost like a muse or it set a fire. It wow. became like, I've always kind of knew I had this in me, but I think because of COVID and I was lonely as hell when I got pregnant with <laughs> twins, I yeah. was like, where are the other moms? What are other people feeling? Is there anybody else pregnant? Does anyone have twins? I became public. And then through that, I started sharing my journey, but I was like, okay, I could do the typical 
nothing's wrong with it. Like mommy vlog and just tell like, you know, my day to day in a very like vloggy kind of style. But that feels so unnatural to me. It's super <laughs> hard for me to vlog and be a normal mom influencer. Like it doesn't, I, I envy some people that can do that easily. Cause that's like, I hate it. I literally hate vlogging. I, uh, it's just, uh, it's not my no, thing. It's not, it's my, not thing my thing either. It's not and at I all. Actually, I don't want to watch it either. I don't. <laughs> I know some I don't want to watch it. it. Like when <laughs> you get up there and you tell <laughs> the first the first video that I fell in love with you was when yeah. you were like, I want to be this gentle mom. Like you did oh, it yeah. to music and you're like, I want to be this gentle mom. And here's how I try. And I try the one time, the two time, the three time. And then and then like you basically like devolve into like screaming at your kids. Yeah. It's like yeah, DMX like, or something comes on. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> but it's so much more creative. I to me, I mean, it's that. it's my taste, you know, it's like, yeah, it's so much more creative. I love that you're like giving us throwbacks to these songs that we freaking love and miss and haven't oh thought about gosh. for a second. Of ho- and like, of course, it's it just, uh. and it flows through you. That's the other yeah. thing. It's like, no one else could do that. A lot of other people can vlog and, and I, and I love them and I, I, I sit down with them and I appreciate yeah. what they have to say, but no one else can do what you do. Oh, no one. I, I really I, I, appreciate that. But don't girl. you think, isn't that true? It's interesting I, because I tell people this when they come to me and they're like, how did you get into this or what have you? I was like, the number one advice I can tell anyone that's looking to show up online creatively or do content creation or social media at all is do whatever feels easiest for you. Whatever comes easy. natural. Oh. Do not try to be <gasps> someone else. Because you will burn out. You can't be consistent with it if it's so hard to do every day. So, like, literally, people are like, "Well, how did you do? You, how did you come up with this?" I was like, "I don't know." Ever since I was little, I remember every word to every song. Every word to every song, yeah. I love. Easy. It's just boom, bam. So then I'll just be singing it to my head, like, "Oh, that could just work for this," and the idea just comes. If I were to sit up and like make a camera of like, "Okay, I'm cooking. Now I'm cleaning," that would take me, like three days 72 hours i'm not i kid you not because it's so hard because of the boredom <laughs> because of the boredom but boredom. also just it's not natural for me to set up and do things that right. i need to do with thinking about the camera i just i'm either setting up to like right. tell you a creative funny thing that I've, I've thought of or i i can't just live my life with the camera i just it doesn't come i'll be thinking about the camera it just isn't natural to me. Every aspect of yeah. vlogging is just not natural to me. So once I figured out and I thought about it, because I would see all these other moms and I'd be like, I need to do what she did. Like, I need to clean and then vlog about it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sucked. It was bad. It was inauthentic. God bless them. God bless them. It just, I couldn't do <sighs> it consistently every day. I couldn't show up that way yeah. because I would, I would be burnt out because it's not natural. So that's when I started to realize, do what I would just want like what comes easy to me, even if it's something you think people are going to cringe at, just nope. do it and see what oh, God happens. Learned. And no, that's what happens. there's no cringing. There's no cringing <laughs> happening over here. I actually am curious. I know you've been speaking yeah. at these mom events. Are, yeah. are you enjoying the community? Do you, I, do you feel as embraced as you should because you're such a fucking star? <laughs> I, I, I love you. I feel like my people <laughs> find like it's, I, I, I think about this cause there's some like, um, like creators or influencers or whatever you can see that they're, they have a lot of, uh, they, their community is divisive in a way that they're not all there to support. It's not all positive. Like, I'm not saying oh. anything on social media is never always going to be positive, but sometimes you curate, you, you're viral, but ne- not necessarily, necessarily like for the right reasons. Or you'll see yeah. even vlog or influencers putting stuff that they know is going to get looked at just to be divisive, right? Just to get that click. And yeah. it creates a community that I wouldn't be able to sustain because I would, I'm too sensitive. Like I really do care what people think of me, but not because I need, like it, it changes who I am, but because I genuinely want to create like a positive mom tribe. Like that is my goal and the space that I create. I want to like lead with joy, funny, authenticity, and like make people feel seen and heard and like maybe make their day. So for you me, do it, babe. I want you I to know. I appreciate you. I just want I you to know. I know you have a you have that five thirty babysitter out. Your your dad the the dad's out of town. You got these babies. I just need you before we get off this call. Yeah. I just want you to know you're doing it. You're I doing it you. every time I see you online. I feel better. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you. So I feel much. better. I, really I do. You I, it's this. like and it's like not the case. All it's the not time. about. It's like. You're not giving me like ideal mom. 
You're giving me like, I'm here in it with you. And I mean, you are an ideal mom and that you're funny and that you're engaged. You love your kids and you're living your truth and you, you, you are an entrepreneur and you have this beautiful relationship with your husband. And, and like, of course you're an ideal mom in reality, but you're not like shoving it down my throat. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, and I, I think like just like dismantling the perfection idea of motherhood is just something that I'm very passionate about. And like, I luckily the algorithm is wild, but I feel like the right people have found me. I always get the, like little trolls that come in, like you're this and that. I'm like, okay, goodbye, block next. I'm sorry, you're sad, right? Like, right, go. But like for the most part, the mom community has embraced me. The twin mom community has embraced me. At least the people that I want there, and I'm just hoping that that continues to find my content continues to find them. Yeah. It means the world to me when I hear people like you say, like, you're doing it, like just some sort of positive. Like I went to this um, conference for all these moms that was local in the DMV and it was black mothers, black mother, millennials, millennial black moms. And I yeah. kid you not, I would I couldn't walk more than like 30 feet without someone coming up to me just saying, oh, my gosh, I love your content. It got me through X, Y and Z. And like having that in person was just like some days I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm done. Like, it's just, I, not necessarily because I don't love what I do, but it's just very emotionally exhaustive to show up online day after day. And then sometimes it's received, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you'll just get that one dude that just is mad at life and affects you. But yeah. then when you have those positive affirmations of like people that look like you, people that you can see yourself in, <laughs> people that you would probably vibe and be friends with like you in real life, yeah. I'm like, okay, boom, bam, girl, I'm back. Boom, bam. You know, I just lo- I love, you know, I love that, you know, you wanted to make a positive impact in your community and you did in your former job. You absolutely did. But it's nice to hear that, like, when you went to that conference and there were other black mothers yes. that they could say, like, you made a positive impact. And I can say from my perspective, from, from my perspective, ditto, you know, like um, it, you transcend also your own community, you know, like it is you. very special and you have your special sauce. And I, I really appreciate that you say that everyone has their special sauce. That, mm-hmm. in fact, like, don't be someone else online. No. You know, it's like all those mommy vloggers, you know, we've had enough. We need a, a Lauren Birdie. That's who we need. We need Daniela Rabani. We need, and yes. it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean necessarily like that you're going to be – I mean, I hope we can all monetize and I hope we can all make an impact and I hope we can all like feed our families and live good lives. It doesn't mean that we're going to like have a million followers necessarily. Maybe that's okay. Like the engagement of real connection Mm -hmm. is so much more fulfilling. Yes. I 100% agree. And don't do it for the money. Like I was doing this because I needed connection. And the whole point, my, my first and foremost was always building community. I had the job at the time and that literally was why I did it. And then I just liked to make the videos. It was easy (laughs) for me to show up because I did not expect any sort of monetization. If you're doing it to blow up, if you're doing it to gain followers, like if you're doing it to go viral or to get that brand deal, that's, and that's your sole way of doing That's just like me working at a law firm and like doing it for the paycheck. Eventually you're going to burn out. It's not going to feed your soul. You have to authentically want to show up every day, get out of your head, have something you feel like that's inside that you want to share with others that will help uplift others and lead with that. And then everything else will just fall into place if it's from, like, I think that genuine place. It's funny because I, I know you say that you're in the twin mom community also. Yes. But I have a singleton. And I think your perspective of having had a child 10 years prior sort of makes you this mentor in a way. Oh. Like you're sti- you're in it. Yeah. You're in it, like you have three and a half year old twins, like you're yeah. definitely in it and it's a totally new experience and you can be funny and, you know, relevant around that experience. Yeah. But your perspective of having done this before feels like the perfect person to be a mentor in this situation. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. It's interesting because I just had this aha moment the other day. I was telling a girlfriend, just like toddlers and teens, we don't talk about it enough, but they are so similar. Like, oh, tell me. Girl, oh, so now I'm like, it's summer at the time of this recording. And so I have my teen at home, my 14-year-old, and I have my toddlers and my husband's gone. And just toddlers are emotionally exhausted. They're, <laughs> they're more physically demanding, right? But there is like an emotional exhaustion with that. Teens, I think I didn't under, I underestimate the emotional exhaustion of a teen. And the fact that you can breathe, you can say good morning wrong, or you can ask <gasps> the wrong question 
and it's a full-blown argument. It might not be a full-blown tantrum like a toddler, but the temperament is equally as fragile. And I'm like, wow. what is happening? There's hormones on this side. There's just toddlering on this side. And I think I didn't realize that until Ma being in it. <laughs> well, I, I remember being yeah. at my kids' Montessori school when they were in preschool. Yeah. And they were saying like, you know, at two years old, this is like a mirror image of what will happen in the teen years. This is a practice round. I couldn't believe what they were saying because I was like, this is fucking so hard. Yes. Like, this is not fun at all. Except they're not I mean, as cute I, and cuddly. No, I mean, because, oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Like, I loved having toddlers. Yeah. I found them so interesting yeah. and, like, their brains are growing at such a rapid rate and, like, yeah. they have these, like, sensitive periods of, like, learning. And yeah. – and they're fun and they are fun, they but are. the temper, they were talking about the temperament yeah. and the temperament really is so sensitive. Like it's really, so sensitive. you could like put a red block out and it's like, like World War Three. World War Three. Yep. And they said this, how, this is a, this is a rehearsal of how yeah. it's going to be when they're teenagers and you want them to come to you and whatever. They, mm -hmm. they were sort of like trying to like make sure that you were like creating that bond where you're the safe space and you don't take it personally, essentially. Yes, that's exactly it. And I think there's so much online too. There's a lot of content that like up, helps moms, of, or, or gives resources to moms of littles. Like I see it all the time. There's a ton of toddler moms, baby moms, because that's like the most popular age. Like you're like, what the hell am I doing? I yes, need help. Yeah, and yeah, there's a yeah. ton of resources. What I've, I'm realizing and I, I want to start creating more is like, I don't really know, like I know how to emotionally regulate myself with a toddler. I know exactly, even though in the moment it could be triggering, I'm like, they're having a meltdown, but I understand it in a, well, in like a way just because I've seen so much about it. Like I know, the, yeah. you know, I just know about it, right? With teens, yes. it's like, it's harder to take it, not take it personally because they're like little adults. And so they say stuff a little bit more cutting. The attitude seems intentional in there. You know what I mean? So I actually, it's harder for me to like, emotionally regulate and not pop off when like also because they're not as so, fragile they're not as fragile so you're not like you're not like afraid yes. you're gonna like traumatize them if you yell right. back at them because you're like you're yelling at me get if away you, yell, you know exactly. like I'm a, and i'm a, yes exactly and so but but at looking back it is normal yeah. it's all normal yeah it's true it's, and it is like developmentally appropriate it's just like i do wish yeah. that there were more supports around the teenage years because also i think part of the reason why you can regulate w with your toddlers is because you've raised a toddler it. before yeah, exactly you're probably you're probably like thinking about it that's it it's like that's my totally son it. is only two and a half years older than my daughter yeah. and i'll tell you when he was a toddler i really I had know. a temper yeah. and i found everything he did triggering and i love this this child I, I i could not be more obsessed with him and it was all so intense. My daughter, just two and a half years later, yeah. does the same shit. And I'm like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Right. I know. It'll pass. <laughs> it is complete. I, that resonates so much because I feel like it's completely possible to be raised by the same person and be raised by a different parent. Oh, a totally I, different parent, a totally different whole, world, by the way. Yes. The world yes. is so different since COVID. Gosh. Like. The world is so different. The world yes. is different because of social media. The world is yes. different for a million different reasons. Inflation. Yes. You know, there are people who were married once and aren't married anymore. Like yes. you can be married. You can, you can be raised by the same parents. My brother and sister were raised by the same parents and they're, they're two years, two, three years apart. For me, I was in a totally different family. I was yeah. like an only child. Yeah. Yeah. With, and we lived in the experience. suburbs. They lived yeah. in the city. It was like a totally different life. Yeah. And like, we're the same family, but I yes. see it even in my, you know, in my two kids. Yeah. And that's, and that's so true. And I also think just thinking about post COVID, it's like, I think the resources that I think I'm looking for, especially with teens is like, I don't understand this era of social media and screens and like oh. the effects it's having on him, you know, like mm -hmm. none of us do. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's like the stakes are higher. <laughs> Yeah, when it comes of to the older ones. And so I think like just understanding like even the attitude or the talk, like we, we, I was just out, like I wasn't, I, I definitely rebelled a little bit in high school, but like I might've been like out and then come back by the street lights coming on. But like the stuff I was doing, I, I understood my rebellious streak. Theirs is different because it's all online. Like 
a lot of it's online, wow. a lot of it's different. And I don't know how to insert myself the same way because it's a, a completely different like experience than the way we grew up. So I really just, do wish wild. we had more. Um, I and you know, like we're both in the mom space, yeah. and we're still yes. like, hey, where is that? Right, teen? right. I'm sure that by the way, like many of us who are creators in this space are gonna end up growing into that. I'm sure exactly. you'll be the, the twin teen mom, right? Exactly. The millennials will grow older, and their kids will get older, and there'll be a ton of resources for our. Like, it's just I think with yeah. the age that we're in, our kids are around most of them not there yet. Some I know you have enough on yeah. your plate, but you could probably trailblaze that if you huh. want. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll just add it to it. You're I, in I, it. I've actually been thinking about it, though. Like, I'm like, I'm going to, like, once I fig- I haven't figured it out at all. Once I have something to share, well, you, I'm like, this is helpful. Right. Maybe I'll share it. Yeah. Well, we'll talk to, like, I don't know, uh, psychiatrists and therapists yeah. and developmental people. Yeah, uh, you you could totally. I mean, this anyway. We're we're like we're like hatching a plan in front of everyone. <laughs> we're gonna tell. I just think for your podcast, it could be a cool. Yeah. It could be cool, a cool side dish. I know it you're known be. for your twin because you have such an, a unique perspective. It's a great. That's a really good push because it's interesting. I had this Dr. Allison Young. It's like of the smartphone effect, and she's oh, an yeah. expert on all things screens for yeah. for mainly teenagers. But we talked about littles at first because I was like, that's. The mom community I have, but then the last part was all about teens. And I, when I tell you, is eye opening with even like a simple practical boundary of there's absolutely no screens in your room ever, like oh. especially not at night, like which I didn't do. I don't know why. I was like, oh, he uses it as an alarm. Also, he's on it all night. Like it's just little things. Me too, like, though. Think, but so yeah, am me I. Too. Exactly. So how am I supposed I, to know like to put that boundary on someone that, else without exactly. knowing it? Might- you know, for myself. Without doing it yourself. And so I think once I had that conversation with her and realized how applicable and practical it was for my oldest, I was like, I need to have more experts on things that are practical for my oldest because it's like the most helpful right now for me. And I think think you're right. um, The the audience of the Mom Curious podcast is we're all nodding our head and we're all very excited (laughs) and you're going to give us a heads up. And we all really appreciate that. Okay, I awesome. don't want you to be Love late it. for your babysitter. I, know, I could I talk know. to you forever, but forever. I'm going to really talk to could. you on your podcast soon enough, yes. which yes. is what? Tell us where to find you. Yeah. So it's called That Twin Mama Podcast and it's streaming on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and you should definitely check it out. You will be on there and it'll be an amazing episode and I can't wait for it. Where can we find you on Instagram? And do you yes. have a website or, or, or something? I do. So my website is thattwinmama.com. And there you can find links to the podcast and different things I have going on, certain merch, all these different ebooks and things I'll have be coming out in the very near future. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram at thattwinmama underscore. Your girl doesn't have the full thing yet, but the underscore is there on Instagram. But on YouTube and on TikTok, it is at thattwinmama. And that's that twin M A M A. Okay, beautiful. I just out of curiosity, can yeah. we check out your husband's band? Oh heck yeah. Yes, Tell please. Us. Everybody go stream Soja. S O J A Sojamusic.com is the website. Um, it is a reggae vibe. If you <sighs> appreciate reggae or chill vibes or island music or like <gasps> being by the beach, you will love their music. I highly highly and it's good for the kids. There's no there's no bad words in it, y'all. So everybody Yo. can listen. Yeah. You guys really got the vibes. You got the vibes. <laughs> we are going to come built- to New York with my. I'm going to bring my hubby too, and we're going to just all have. I like. He's going to be excited to meet you too. Does this he ever just, perform in New York? He does. When, like, he just. He. I don't. I don't. He's on tour now in the U.S. with another band called Stick Figure. They're on the West Coast right now, but I'm sure they're playing somewhere in New York. Literally in the next. I'll text you because I. I, can't I, wait. I guarantee you they're playing somewhere at some like venue in New York. They've played and then we'll hang. a bunch of times, but I don't know what they're playing this year. But anyway. Well, congratulations on this beautiful life you guys I built together. Thank you. I Who knew you. a junior in college and all this was ahead of you? <laughs> Holy With cow. a dude with hair down to his back of his A knees, white like with, dude. A white, white dude, dude with dreadlocks with dread, yes. to what? His butt? To be, to, not to be like in his defense. I legit, and I kid you not, I thought he was mixed. I, oh. I 
he, the way his hair is, the way his he like I could think it was he was tan. It was the summer, and honestly, just the he grew up around a bunch of black people. He was always one of the they all were always the only white people. Like they were always just around Jamaicans in the D.C. area. Like the way he talked, the way he knew about certain things of our culture. I was like, oh, this dude's mixed. Met his parents. I realized that that is not the case. That, no, I love there them, is but not they are a very black white. person in the room except for <laughs> you. Not a black person. There's no nothing in the gene pool. I don't think. Like, Wait, tell me, is it is it a different experience raising mixed children? Is that it, is that a consideration? Yes, it's, ha- it's oh my gosh. very much a consideration, and it is one that I am like. We live in a predominantly white area. I grew up in a predominantly white area. I went to school in one, and so I firsthand know the effects of being like one of the only brown people. And yep. not having like that community around you. So yep. it's this like very conscious effort that we are going to places, doing activities, putting them in other school groups. Like we're in Jack Good. and Jill, which is all black and brown kids to make sure they get that because it's so important. But yeah, pretty much every decision we make for them, we always kind of consider what this where they come like from as a brown. And- yeah, exactly. Exactly. And they would be considered brown because they're mixed, not black? I mean, I, I guess that's such an interesting, because I'm not, I mean, I'm my parents are both black. I'm sure there's stuff in me, right? But like, I actually wonder that. Like, I've never, like for my, I have a friend that's black and white. I was like, what do you, what do you say? And she also, like, she was always told she was black. Because like, if that's just in the black community. If you're mixed, you're black. We've all, like, yeah. that's, I think, come, that comes from like even I've, slave days. Like, it's Oh, just, really? I think I, I that. think that's where it derives from because like if you were a little bit black you have to be black like but if you're mixed you're black in the black community we we claim you like that is you are us I I but, also thought that that's the, I, I mean as a, no. a non-black person I yeah. thought that if you're mixed you're black or mixed yeah, I just always assumed because it's not about who like it really a race is such a construct like it's yes, like it's such, such a, a construct. like it doesn't really it's not real it's not real we <laughs> so made like it up. exactly if you yes. look one way if like you walk into a room and you look one way I, it, it's possible that all three of your children look totally different also oh my gosh shiloh my i love her to death she looks like like she I, she, she looks white me yeah right like, so that's she, like, like yeah she white like but, green eyes like very much straight hair wow yeah, yeah. Well, it's really, it's such an interesting conversation. I want to hear more about it. I, I, yeah. I'm basically, yes. am I scripting all of your next podcasts? For- you basically are. <laughs> I just want like, to know okay, everything I'm about find you. A person for teens. I'm going to find a mixed like person that can like talk about the race construct. But you're the mixed person. I am the mixed person, but you're I do the mixed wonder person. That, like, I know. <laughs> I know. That's I mean, you're, you're, right, you're, you're not actually, but you're, you're the mixed yes. mama. Like it is so yeah. interesting and it's so important actually. I really yeah, think it it's really important, is. especially in this because day and age. It's like different. We've evolved from what like everybody has to be one thing. Like it's, yeah. Oh no, I, it's better when we're all different, don't you? Yes. Think? Everybody make babies it's with so everybody juicy. else. So be extra beautiful and like everybody will be a little bit more. Oh, that's so that. beautiful. All the races. So the beautiful. Mix. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that was a great hour of my life. Oh, I love you. I love you. I too. thank you. I thank you for the goodness and the music you put out. Both of you, the the music and the goodness that you put into the world. You're beautiful thank children. You. Thank you for taking that. the time. Um, I hope everyone enjoys Lauren on the interwebs yes. and on her podcast. And I just can't wait to continue this love fest. Goodbye. Oh, we are continue the conversation. Goodbye, y'all. <laughs> Peace. 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 Thank you, as always, for listening to the Mom Curious Podcast. My name is Daniela Ravani. I am your host. And I would love to continue this conversation at Daniela Ravani on Instagram. And if you'd be so kind to rate and review, share this podcast, I would be just really grateful. Catch you next time, every Tuesday on the Mom Curious Podcast. Produced by Hoff Studios. You can find them at Hoff Studios on Instagram as well. All right, have a great day.